Doug White for Model Car Muse. One of the things we love about this hobby is that every build is a new adventure. There are always little challenges to figure out. This video is about three things I haven't figured out yet. Muse means inspiration. And one thing that has inspired me is the history of engine turning. We've seen it on Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis. It started out in aviation, and it became just a really cool trend in hot rodding. I made this sample for the students on the high school robotics team that I mentor. They wanted a really cool look for their robot. When the robot's in competition, it's under LED lights, engine turning just glistens. In the early days, aviation guys would take a leather cloth, with some valve grinding compound and just with their thumb just make swirls repeat one after the other what i did and what a lot of hot rodders do is i used a stainless steel brush in my drill press and i just laid down the piece brought the brush down made a circle a swirl and then i just stepped and repeat moved it over three quarters of an inch dropped it down moved it over three quarters of an inch dropped it down a little oil for lubrication and to keep the grinding brush clean. Then when I got to the shop with the students, we set up everything on a bridge port with a table that would slide. The bridge port milling machine allowed us to give consistent pressure against the metal. The table allowed us to make the increments very even. I've always wanted to get this same look in scale on some of my models. You can probably buy decals, but I wanted to have the real thing. I started out with my milling machine, recreating the same effect. I've tried valve grinding compound. I've tried all kinds of abrasives. I've tried little sanding pads glued to the end of shafts that come down. And it's all been just okay. I haven't solved it yet. Still working on it. One of the challenges I haven't solved yet to replicate cloth covered ignition wire that was used in vintage cars, you know, spark plug wire. What I've tried is taking aluminum rod and cross hatching it and painting it. If you want to cut a piece of aluminum rod, you line up your X-Acto at 90 degrees to the rod and roll it back and forth. Each successive pass, the blade falls into the groove. And once you get a pretty good groove, you can just snap it. So with a good section, what I've tried is that Similarly with the blade, I've gone in at maybe 30 or 45 degrees and cross-hatched it back and forth. This cross-hatching will give me small grooves that I can put some paint in there and use that to define the different threads in the insulation that's on the wire. I'm not happy with it because I've just never solved the application of either paint or ink or whatever will give me the threads uh, that are part of the insulation on the real wire. But if you do things like pinning the mirrors on the side of your model or other things, you know, parts when you're assembling them, and you want to make a small section, a rod that holds whatever in place, door handles, if you cross hatch it like that, it gives a really good surface for the glue to grip. At least that's handy. I'll carry through the rest and maybe I'll get some ignition wire figured out one day. One of my stalled projects is a 56 Ford Country Squire. I started out with the old AMT kit, the Ertl kit that we know so well, the Victoria. Added a roof section, and then what I'm really happy with is I got the drip rail just right, just like the factory. I've then gone in and added the fiberglass that goes around the faux woody inlay. So you can go out, you can get decals, you can get veneer to make your inlay, but I was really never super happy with what was available. Real wood, it's just not in scale. The grain just never looked right. So I went into Photoshop and I started laying out the wood to get it just the way I wanted. The divisions in between that are the light tan color, I wanted the right count and I wanted them to fall in the right place in comparison to that light wood surround that goes around the inlay. I prepped this, did it in scale. I wanted to get the lines just right so it fit within that surround. I printed it out on Micromark white 
decal paper. I know I want to paint the body of the car a dark color. Under white decal paper, the dark color of the body of the car will not show through. My next challenge is to replicate the surround. It's white plastic on this model. It's a separate piece. I made it so I can lay the dark brown decal in and lay this on top of it. On the real car, it's sections of fiberglass painted to look like wood. So what I'm going to do is paint wood color, what you see here in white, and then I'm going to lay wood grain over it. My plan is to extrude from this just that dark brown essence that makes it look like wood grain and then print it on clear decal paper and then lay that over the painted surround, much like the upholstery decals from Scale Motorsport. The white area that you see here is transparent. A piece of the decal got stuck in the package and as you can see it's transparent. So you paint your seat whatever color, lay this over it, and everything that's transparent is the color you've painted the seat. And my plan is to do in essence the same with the wood grain. I haven't quite figured out how this is going to work. One way or the other I'm going to solve this because to me the wood grain on this car is just so cool and I want to get it just right. So the other thing I haven't figured out is when I'm done, do I put an old town canoe on the roof? Or does this become a push car for a vintage front engine dragster? Don't know yet. Working on that. Follow your muse wherever you may find it and may there always be a project on your bench. Thanks for watching.